A few years ago, quite a few, in every electronics workshop they had a vacuum tube tester. Some testers were expensive, some cheap, but anyway, you had to check the condition of the vacuum tubes before going on troubleshooting somewhere else. Tubes were the main cause of breakdowns, and the most common failure was the weakening of the electron emitting element, the cathode. The test consisted in passing a stream of electrons inside the vacuum tube. Say we had a pentode, five electrode tube. We would have the cathode, control grid, screen grid, secondary emission suppressor grid, which in the beam power tubes could be a pair of beam forming electrodes, and finally the anode or plate. The tube also had a filament, which heated the cathode so it would emit electrons, which went through the grids and reached the plate or anode. Take for instance the test of a 6V6 beam power tube. The numbers of the pins for each internal element are shown in this diagram. The test was quite simple. You had to turn on the filament by applying the corresponding voltage, which in this case would be 6 volts, by using an adjustable alternating current source, also called a filament source. Then an adjustable DC voltage source negative terminal was connected to the cathode and all other electrodes in the tube were connected to its positive terminal through a millimeter shunted by a rheostat, which indicated the intensity of the current flow, dependent on the cathode emission capacity. On the front of the tester, we had a set of sockets for plugging in the tubes in order to test them. In the case of the 6V6 beam power pentode, an octal socket would be used. The tester also had a series of sliding switches, which determined the correct connections for each tube pin, since the various tubes had different configurations. The wiring from the two sources, the alternating current for filaments and the direct current for testing the cathode current, was steered by the sliding switches to the correct tube pins. Since the 6V6 has no connection in pin number 1, the first slide switch remains at the bottom position. One end of the filament connects to pin number 2 of the tube, so the second switch is also left in the lower position, which is also a terminal of the filament source. The positive output of the direct current source is connected to the tube plate by means of sliding switch number 3. Sliding switch number 4 also connects the screen grid of the tube to the positive output of this same DC source. Sliding switch number 5 also connects the control grid of the tube to the positive output of this same DC source. The 6V6 tube has no connection in terminal number 6, therefore the 6 sliding switch remains in the lowest position. The other end of the filament connects to the terminal number 7 of the tube, so the seventh switch is placed in the second upwards position, which provides alternating voltage for the filament, coming from the other terminal of the filament current source. Sliding switch number 8 is placed in the third upwards position to make contact with terminal 8 of the vacuum tube which is the cathode, and which must return to the negative terminal of the DC high voltage source. Finally, the sliding switches 9, 10 and 11 stay down, 
since the 6V6 tube has no terminals beyond number 8. Then the high voltage DC source is activated by means of a button label test. The electrons travel from the cathode to all other electrodes and the meter indicates a reading in the green zone, which tells us that the emission is acceptable. If the reading falls within the red area, we have a tube with poor emission. The yellow area indicates a tube whose emission has gone weak, although it still works. This is basically the way an emission tube tester operates. More expensive testers include testing mutual conductance and leakage between the electrodes. I hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.